This is Mike Raper from North, and he's the head honcho at North. Yeah. Brand director. Brand director. Brand director. Um, so responsible for all the marketing, all the products, um, working with the team. So, yeah. so um, you guys have launched a bunch of new kites. The, the Reach yeah. got a complete redesign, so let's yeah. maybe start. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Start down here um, with the Reach. Yeah, super excited. We've uh, our classic range. We've got the Orbit, it's a big air kite, um, and that DNA is just continuing. I'll go into a bit of detail. We've got the Reach, was kind of our desert island kite that does a little bit of everything. Um, and then we've got the Code Zero, which is our light wind foiling kite, a single strut uh, light wind foiling kite. We've got the Pulse, which is our freestyle kite, and um, I think that's oh the Carb, the all new design, design re massive redesign on the Carb. So super proud of the kite range this year. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start let's with. Start with the reach what yeah from a design point of view what from a performance point of view are you guys trying to change yeah so the the year on year with the reach we basically just wanted to give it um, a little bit more light end bottom end without losing that high top end it's kind of that that we call it the desert island kite if you're going to go to an island and you wanted one kite that was going to boost loop foil surf that's the re the reach is your go-to and it's not a kite you're ever going to grow out of it's a fantastic first time kite but it still has a really high performance our riders are still looping it it turns quickly it relaunches easily it rockets up wind um, and it works super well especially in the bigger sizes 13 15 17 works really well in the light wind conditions we've just been refining this design year on year working really hard on on having a really clean geometry um, in fact this is something you'll hear me say about all the kites Papain Smith our, our kite designer um, has been working really hard on just seeing how the kite flies in the air we take a lot of photos a lot of video to just try and almost a little bit of dressmaking at one stage is just keeping it really clean canopy because the cleaner that is the less wrinkles and bumps and, and loading there is and the cleaner faster it's going to fly through the sky that's why the reach has got such an easy um, easy feel it's got a really big sweet spot so you can you don't have to be a super technical rider but at the same time if you want to push the limits um, it's got some really nice bar pressure throughout the range so really really proud of the reach um, range of all sizes I think every every meter we've got a size um, and it's definitely by far our most popular model but in close second is very much the orbit um, maybe we'll just wander down and have a look at the orbit the orbits had it's been out in its fifth season, um, and the DNA of the orbit just, you never want to change it. It's, it's a big air, um, big air kite. It's, it's designed to boost high, but most importantly, it's designed to loop really easily. So no matter where you are, if you're inverted, you're upside down, you're kind of losing your direction, you can still feel the whole time, you can feel where that kite is. Unlike some of our competitors, um, their kites can jump, but they don't loop as cleanly as well. So it's won all the reviews worldwide at the moment. Um, over the past couple of seasons because it is so predictable in the unpredictable. I, I um, heard there was a lot of interest from the Groms in town after the big air event here. Yeah. That after they saw the orbit in action, they were all wanting yeah, to Yeah, like, Cohen, Cohen Van Dyke um, came first place in BAKL. In fact, he's won uh, three BAKLs this year, I think January in, in, uh, in um, Cape Town, um, and then most recently first year as well. So we're really, really proud of the performance. It's, um, it jumps high, um, you know, there's, I think there's one other brand that's maybe jumping a little bit higher, but the difference is it's easy. It's, this, is, this, is, this is performance made easy. And, and in the beginning, we kind of always said, you know, as you're a beginner, don't buy an orbit. But the reality is if you feel like you're, you're somebody who, who's going to progress quickly, then you can comfortably get onto an orbit and know that it's a fun kite. It's still got a reasonably good end bottom end but most importantly it's got an insanely high top end you can hold on to an orbit in in another five knots in comparison to some of the competitors it just flies forward in the window um, and especially when you're learning to jump it's the timing of the jump is really really easy really simple again i talk about the geometry of the kite um Papain smith our, our kite designer has been working really hard on just cleaning it up refining it new bridles tweaks um, what you will find this year is the smaller sizes six seven eight and nine, I've um, just got a little bit more power because a lot of riders are going for those double loops now. So they're just looking for, hey, I want to get a little bit higher on my smaller kite. Incoming more of it. That's good. And I think I've lost my lost my mic. There you go. Um, anyway, all good. Um, so yeah, uh, Orbit, super, super proud of the performance. It continues its DNA, um, podium winning. It's been proven on the podium numerous times with coders. Um, and we've got an incredible 
bunch of team riders, Mark Jacobs, Luca, Cohen, these guys are just pushing the limit of what's possible in orbit at the moment. So five strut kite versus a reach, which is a three strut kite versus a code. Let's go and have a look at that. It's a single strut kite. Well, quick little question about the orbit. So what yeah. would you say performance wise, this is the orbit was the very first kite you guys launched when you yeah. when you launched the brand. Yeah. Um, what would you say has changed the most in the orbit from that initial uh, design? I think, yeah, and I think if you look at it, we traditionally had a, what we call a two-stage arc. So if you look at the shape, the, the front profile as the kite flies forward, you'd notice it was quite knuckly, and I kind of yeah. use my knuckles as an example. Yeah. What's happened over time is we've really smoothed out the, the geometry of, of that profile and made it, um, made it a little bit more rounder. So what it happens yeah. now is when you're looping, you're spinning and you're turning, it just that's one of the reasons that it really likes to corkscrew and and, and yeah. spin in the air and that's been one of the biggest changes also the profile transition panels so these you see these panels on the leading edge these are critically important because most of this is where the air flows around the leading edge and then comes up into the canopy and getting this section accurate and really consistent is super super important for pep um, and that's where he's found he's made the most advancements. And again, it's, it's like anything. It's just those fine-tuning, refining. It's not about revolutionizing anything. It's about gentle, continued evolution. So once you've got a good idea, don't mess with it. Let's just keep tweaking it. Let's keep improving it. And I think now in its fifth generation, it's, it's, a, it's a prime example of, of uh, uh, evolution and refinement. Do you think it would be fair to say that the, the changes in the performance of the kite reflect the changes in the big air style of riding that the guys are doing? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, we've, we've been working really closely with the team riders, um, just collecting their feedback, listening to what they're pushing for, and especially as everyone's starting to do the S loops and the double loops, um, it's been really important to have a kite that can really, really get, get a nice carving, quick, tight turn super important and still catch you. I mean, this is a big thing. A lot of big air, it's all about the catch. So if you've got a kite that can fly quickly and can loop and can turn, you can get that extra rotation in or heli loop just before you land. It means you've got that nice soft landing and you're not going to bust your knees out. Yeah. Well, let's go uh, pop over and have a look at the code here. Yeah, so code's um, code oh, zero. Um, code zero has been, this is its now third season. Um, and the Code Zero has been incredibly popular. It's we didn't we weren't sure how big the market of one strut kites were, um, but I think we started to go head to head with all the competitors in that area, and we're really proud of the performance. It does flap a little bit on its top end, um, but nothing compared to our competitors, which you can just see them kind of flapping away. Again, clean geometry. Super lucky with Pep. Um, he's passionate about about one strut kites and as his partner just spends her life riding so consequently he wanted to keep her happy um, so and that's that's made us really happy um, the again the profile transition panels and the leading edge super important um, very lightweight it's not just a foil a light wind wing and it's not a kite and it's not just um, a foiling kite it actually works really well especially in the smaller sizes if you're into surfing I wouldn't go out and like anything over sort of head head and a half high but for those smaller days when you just want to go out and you want to rip on a couple of waves, um, the, the Code Zero is fantastic for doing that. Really, really proud of it. Tweak the bridles a little bit this year. Again, refinement, not, not, um, not a, a complete uh, redesign. Sweet. Yeah, I'm loving the, uh, the new logo redesign. Yeah, I may, I'll talk about that inside. Sure. That could be a good one to do. Um, we can talk about that. Do you want to do the carve, maybe? Sorry. Yeah. Carve, yeah. <clears throat> so introducing the carve, we, we had, um, over the past couple of years, the carve's always had a lot of power. Um, and people would quite often ride a size down from what they would normally ride. And we've tried to adjust that so that there's not as much power in the kite as we've had in the past. So please, anyone that's ridden a carve in the past, and you maybe didn't like it or you didn't enjoy it as much, please give this another go because it's a huge redesign. Our designer, Dan O.C., is based in the Philippines, north of the Philippines, which is a, is a surfing mecca, kite surfing mecca within Asia. Um, and he's personally a really, really good uh, wave rider. So he was just like, right, let's make this puppy work really well. It flies forward more now. Um, really good for jumping freestyle, free ride. Um, but most importantly, it's got a beautiful linear depower. And what I mean by linear depower is that instead of a, an off or an on power it's got a nice uh, linear depower which means as you push it away it depowers less and less and less but you can always feel where the kite is because there's nothing worse than going for a bottom turn 
you go for that top turn and if you can't depower it quickly you get blown out the back of the wave so what he's tried to do is at all stages when you even when you push that bar all the way away you can still one-handed you can still pull the kite back down even though it's completely depowered it still turns in the air and that's the biggest single change year on year um, and you can actually have that kite really follow you as you as you're riding on the wave so mate it's made a huge difference but please give it a go um, uh, you will notice a really really big improvement year on year yeah how for, for someone riding in like say pretty light wind surf conditions and but they still want the kite to drift really well how would it compare to say the code in like really light winds? Um, I think for the super light wind, I think the code, I'd, I'd probably go for the code, but as soon as you've got a little bit of power, um, I think that's where the carve sort of comes into its own. It's, it's kind of that medium to, to higher end wind range. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's, I, I would probably pick, if I was super light conditions, go on a code zero. Um, and if it was like medium to stronger conditions, I'd probably go for a carve. Yeah. Which one, which kite in the lineup with the guys that are doing the, um, the, the strapless big air events? Yeah, um, it depends if they're going for the really big air, they can, sometimes they take the orbit. Um, but for the standard traditional strapless freestyle, yeah. which a lot of our riders um, with Camille and Capucine, world champion, two times world champion on the carve, she loves and they, they both love the, the feel of the carve this year because they're getting a little bit additional extra height. Because it's got a little bit more of a free ride characteristic, um, it flies forward a little bit faster, it jumps a little bit higher this year. Um, and they're loving that, that, that uh, additional hang time because you can take the board off, you can do more tricks with the board. But they've been looping the carve, um, you, it's, it's easy for looping, um, but definitely doesn't jump as high as the orbit. And uh, this is Hugh Penfold. He does a lot of the uh, design work at North, doing mostly like the bars and accessories. And, uh, yeah, yeah, anything hardware. Yeah. yeah, anything that isn't the kite or the boards. Yeah. So you guys have a, a new addition to the bar lineup with the shorter throw. Yeah, so for sure. Maybe take a quick little look at that and I'll ask you some questions from this side of the camera. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've always had the regular throw, but uh, we like to do things at North. We like to keep it clean and simple so rather than having to add a stopper ball which sometimes doesn't punch out when you want it to or some sort of crazy system to keep the handle down we thought why don't we just offer a bar that has a shorter throw for people with a shorter reach so as you can see here it's, it's 10, 10 centimeters shorter and it actually this one doesn't have the shorter loop but it comes with the shorter loop as standard and uh, so what it's going to do is it's going to mean if someone with a shorter reach lets the bar go and it goes up to here, they're going to be able to grab it and pull it down a lot, a lot easier. Uh, and it also means that it's going to put the trim handle within reach. So with our trim handle, if you don't have a space here in between the stopper ball, then when it's at full power like this, your trim handle seems to stick out. But with our one, we have a space in between here, so it drops down. It brings the trim handle eight centimeters close to you as well. So with this bar, we definitely recommend using a size 12 as a maximum. Generally, a, a smaller person, that will kind of be their yeah. biggest kite anyway. And the reason for that is that at maximum throw, if you're completely maxed out on your kite, then you may not have quite as much depower as you would with say a regular navigator bar. So I have tried this on a 15 meter reach at about 25 knots just to see what the maximum was. And when I was riding along, I would under loop the kite for a worst case scenario and let the bar go and see you know, how much it kept on pulling. And it wasn't quite enough, I must say, but it was very extreme going out in that sort of wind with that bigger kite. But you can always pull a bit of trim on, which also does the same thing, depowers a kite if you're really overpowered. But generally, I think someone who's going to be the target audience for this bar, they're going to be riding a kite 12 and under anyway. Yeah. yeah. But all of the people we've given a short throw bar to uh, have and have had the shorter reach have not wanted to give it back. They're like, oh my god, I've, been, I've wanted this 
I've wanted this forever. So yeah, it's a game changer if you have a shorter reach for sure. So we're over here with the, um, all of the different Mystic Spreader Bar options. Um, so this one's really cool. This is for someone who only free rides. They never do any unhooking or anything like that. And they want to get the bar a bit, the bar a bit closer to them. Um, this would be perfectly paired with a short harness loop because it's going to bring everything closer to you. Yeah. And then you've got the likes of the slider spreader bar down here. And on this, on a slider, I would actually wouldn't bother using that ring. Yeah. I, you can take this rope off because it's not necessary if you're using a slider, um, a surf slider harness yeah. loop because that's going to have the metal on here already okay. and polished metal on this rope yeah. is going to slide really effortlessly. Okay. You could put a regular loop if you didn't want to buy you know a, a proprietary surf slider then you could put your regular one on here and it's going to do the same thing but it's going to make everything a little bit further away again yeah for guys that are going for the fixed position should they just go in there or should they put the little steel loop up yeah there? i mean that's that's a super cool feature i think putting that through and once again i'd go that option if i was using a regular harness loop but if i was using a surf slider then i'd just put that straight onto there